Order in the court. Order. Order. Welcome to the court of Kristen's opinion. And today the topic at hand is digital nomad and remote work visas. Are they worth it? Do you need one? In this video, I'm going to go through all of the countries that are offering some sort of remote work permit at this time and let you know whether they are approved or denied. Oh, no. Of course, this is not actual legal advice and you can make your own decision on where you'd like to work from your laptop and travel, but I hope that this video helps you make that decision. So first of all, let's just review really quickly what a digital nomad visa is because 2020 has been the year of the digital nomad visa for sure. There are upwards of 15 or 20 different digital nomad visas on the planet right now. And before the coronavirus pandemic, there were zero. There were some freelancer visas, some startup visas and work permits and things like that. But before this pandemic, there was no such thing as a digital nomad visa. So the basic premise of any digital nomad visa program is that it allows a foreigner to live in a country for an extended period of time, usually six to 12 months, but in some cases up to two years. And this is a lot different from traveling around the world on your passport because you can stay a lot longer in countries that you could stay for for 30 to 90 days sometimes with your passport, you can now stay up to six months, one or two years. So that is the biggest value of a digital nomad visa. But as you're about to find out, some of them are more valuable than others. It's also important to point out before we start that a digital nomad visa or a remote work visa is not a permanent residency and it's not a path to citizenship in a different country. It's just a temporary permit to stay officially working from your laptop, which you could arguably do without that visa as millions of digital nomads have been doing for the past years and even decades. So it's just legitimizing the digital nomad lifestyle in a way and giving remote workers a more official status to work from their laptops in different countries. So let's start with Barbados. Barbados was the first country to announce and launch a digital nomad visa program back in July of 2020. And I was so excited that I made a video about it. But as soon as more of the details came out about this Barbados welcome stamp, it turned out that it could have been a bit more hype than I originally thought. The welcome stamp allows foreigners to live in Barbados for up to a year and work remotely from their laptops. But prior to the Barbados visa, most citizens of most countries could travel there anyway for up to six months. So this digital nomad visa is doubling the length of time that you can stay in Barbados, but it comes with a price a two to $3,000 non-refundable application fee. And so that is definitely a downside. Unless you have a specific reason that you want to stay in Barbados for 12 months, I'm gonna say pass. Denied. Oh, that's so loud. I'm gonna hit that less hard. Yeah, I should have invested more in my gavel. And if anyone from any country's government is watching this video, I do recommend that before your country launches a digital nomad visa or remote work permit, you consult with one of the many digital nomads out there, myself included, who can tell you what to include as perks in your program to get people to actually apply for it. So you got to make sure that you're offering value to remote workers more than just an extended length of stay to actually attract us to go to your countries. Am I right? Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see in a digital nomad visa and let's make it happen. Next up, we have Estonia. Estonia is a Baltic country that shot to fame internet fame that is, back in 2014 with the announcement of the first ever 
e-residency program where you could open a company from outside the country and run it online from anywhere in the world. But shortly after Barbados announced their digital nomad visa, Estonia followed up with one of their own, and it's also allowing a one-year stay in Estonia. But there are some key differences between Barbados and Estonia. Estonia's digital nomad visa has a much lower application fee of only 80 to 100 euros compared to the two or three thousand dollars that Barbados is charging. So there's a lower barrier to entry for the Estonia visa and it also provides more value because Estonia is located in Northern Europe, but as part of the Schengen zone. So that means that you could actually create a home base in Estonia and travel to nearby Schengen countries without that taking away from your total number of days in the Schengen. So before the digital nomad visa or without the digital nomad visa, if you went to Estonia, you could travel there for 90 days including every other country in the Schengen. But now you can go to Estonia for 90 days and then into the Schengen for 90 days and hop back over the border to your new home base. The downside of the Estonia visa, however, is that if you stay for 183 days or more, you will be considered a tax resident in Estonia. So I'm sure a lot of digital nomads are going to try to avoid doing that, but Overall, Estonia is a much more central and affordable home base for remote workers compared to Barbados, which is a bit isolated with a high cost of living in the Caribbean. So in the case of Estonia's digital nomad visa, I say approved. The only catch with Estonia's visa is that you do have to prove a minimum income of 3,504 euro per month, and you also have to prove that you are self-employed or that you work for a foreign company. So for anyone making less than 3,500 euro per month, you're out of luck, but you could still visit Estonia with your passport. Our next country on the list is the Eastern European country of Georgia. And when Georgia's Minister of the Economy announced the Remotely from Georgia program, I was really excited to see what they had in store because Georgia is a country that has become increasingly popular with digital nomads, expats, and remote workers lately. It has a growing startup and co-working scene super fast internet and was also supposed to be the home of the nomad summit conference in 2020 that unfortunately got pushed back a little bit but the digital nomad visa however doesn't seem to offer that much value it grants remote workers a period of 180 to 365 days to go and stay there and this is including if your country is currently restricted from travel to georgia during the coronavirus but that's about it to apply they say that you should have a minimum monthly income of two thousand dollars per month but there's nothing that says that you have to prove that you make that much although they also want you to have an insurance policy for coverage while you're there but without the georgia digital nomad visa you could already travel there depending on your passport for up to one year at a time without any sort of official visa or work permit. So although the Remotely from Georgia program can make you official, there were already digital nomads working in Georgia for up to a year with their passports before this program was formed. So should you apply for it? I don't know, it can't really hurt. I mean, you really have nothing to lose. There's no application fee. There's very minimum requirements and you'll get to join the Remotely From Georgia Club. So yeah, sure, apply. Up next, we're hopping back over to the Caribbean to look at Antigua and Barbuda's remote work program. This one has a similar application fee to neighboring Barbados. However, Antigua and Barbuda are offering 
up to two years of staying in the country working from your laptop. So that's one of the longest programs out there. The Nomad Digital Residence Visa program costs $1,500 to apply for an individual, $2,000 for couples, or $3,000 for families. I think they should switch that around. It should be Digital Nomad Residence, whatever. Citizens from any country can apply, and without the visa, you can typically stay for up to 180 days on average. So this visa in residence program is basically tripling the amount of time that you can stay there. Should you apply if you are looking for a home base in the Caribbean? Yes, approved. If you are a family, a digital nomad family that's looking for a home base, yes. If you are a single person who's just looking to apply for a digital nomad visa program, no. Why pay $1,500 to go to a country that you can already go to for six months? So I would only apply for this one if you are planning on making the Caribbean your home base for at least two years. And if you really love it there, then that will give you some time to explore other permanent residency or citizenship by investment options in the region. Although those typically cost from six to seven figures, and that's a topic for another video. Another country in the Caribbean with the Digital Nomad Visa program is Bermuda. And this one's offering stays of up to one year with a very low threshold for applying and a low application fee of only $263. To apply for the Work From Bermuda program, you will need to show some source of income or at least say that you have a reliable source of income. You'll also need travel insurance, no criminal record, and be at least 18 years old. As with any other digital nomad visa program, you'll also have to show that you are either self-employed or work for a foreign company. But if you do get approved to Bermuda's program, you can get the application processed really quickly and move into your new island home in just a matter of a week or so. So if you wanna go see some pink or white sand beaches in clear blue water, then I say apply. Now let's move back from the Caribbean Sea to the Adriatic with Croatia's Digital Nomad Visa program. This one I'm actually really excited about because typically, although Croatia is not a Schengen country, it is in the EU and the longest that you can stay on just a passport with a tourist visa is usually 90 days. But with the new Croatia visa program, word is that you may be able to stay in Croatia with extensions for up to two years. And that is a really great home base for digital nomads because it has a really moderate, affordable cost of living, around two to $3,000 per month to live very comfortably. It has a mild climate, great food, lots of outdoor activities and things to do, and really fast internet. You can also travel by car or by bus or by plane to a lot of neighboring countries in the region. And it's great if you like water sports, sailing and boating as well. And although the application fee hasn't been announced yet, I think it's going to be on the low side with quite a, a low barrier of entry as far as minimum income requirements for your monthly income. And it could even include some other perks like free health care and connection to the Croatia local digital nomad community. So in the case of Croatia's visa, I will say apply. Now let's talk about the nearby United Arab Emirates program, which is a remote work Dubai visa. And this visa is also quite interesting because it's giving you an up to one year stay in the UAE. And it is also a moderate application fee of just a couple hundred dollars. However, you do need to prove not only that you are self-employed or working for a foreign company, but that you have a minimum monthly income of $5,000 per month. So not everybody will qualify for that, but without this visa, the maximum amount of time that you could typically stay is with a 30-day visa on arrival. So having the option to live in Dubai or the UAE for up to a year is quite valuable. And the UAE is also 
a tax-free co country with no income tax, so that's also a plus. Dubai is also known for having a really high quality of life, although it does have a rather high cost of living, and it looks like the authorities in Dubai are making a real effort to help remote workers get acclimated to the local culture there, meet other expats, of which there are many living in the Emirates, and also get access to some public services and even schooling. You'll also need proof of international travel and medical insurance, which you should have anyway, and you can check out the two companies I use in this video's description, but for only a $287 application fee and the opportunity to live in Dubai for up to a year, I say apply. Next, we're going to change climates a little bit and head over to Iceland, which announced in October of 2020 that they too were jumping on the digital nomad bandwagon by offering a remote work long stay visa for Iceland. And this one has the highest minimum income requirement that I have seen yet. Depending on if you are a single couple or family, you must earn between 1 million or 1.3 million Icelandic krona per month, which is equivalent to 7,500 to upwards of 10,000 US dollars per month. And this is because the cost of living is quite high in Iceland. Uh, could be 30 to 50% higher than living in the US, depending on which city you're in, although locals live cheaper, but with the exchange rate and the cost of goods and services, it's a lot more expensive for foreigners. So there are five total requirements for Iceland's visa. First, of course, you'll have to be self-employed or have a remote job. Second, you'll have to be a high earner. Third, you will have to have a travel and medical insurance policy that covers you in Iceland for up to $15,000, which you can get through Safety Wing or World Nomads up to $250,000 in coverage, so no problem there. You'll also need to pay the 11,000 krona application fee, about 83 US dollars, and then you'll have to get all of your documentation verified, certified, notarized, and apostyled. So that is a bit of a process on its own, but it's definitely possible. And once you get your application in, you'll wait about three or four weeks for approval, and then you can travel to Iceland three months after that, which will kick off a 180 day stay of being able to live and work with a view of fjords and glaciers. So I guess you can't really put a price on that. I've been to Iceland five times, and if you wanna check out more videos about how to travel there or what it's like to live and work there, uh, check out this playlist and links in the video's description. But overall, I would say, unless you've never been to Iceland before or you don't have any specific reason to go there, I'm gonna take a pass. I would recommend applying for Iceland's visa if you meet the income requirements and you're looking for a nice, quiet place to get a lot of work done. So if you're looking for a big digital nomad community and warm weather and lots of social activities, that's a no. But if you need to write a book, write a thesis, start an online business or go somewhere with peace and quiet and you have the extra cash, yes. And the next island nation we're going to is the Cayman Islands, where without their digital nomad visa program, the maximum amount of time you can stay there was previously six months. But with its new Cayman Global Remote Work Concierge program, you can stay for up to two years but it will cost you not just a $1,500 application fee, but actually the Cayman Islands has even higher income requirements compared to Estonia. If you're an individual, you will need to prove a minimum of $100,000 per year in income. Couples will need to show $150,000 a year and families $180,000 per year. You'll also need a notarized bank reference that no other country is requiring a criminal background check, proof of health insurance, and proof of identity and employment or self-employment. Um, but 
The Cayman Islands does offer a really nice lifestyle that has attracted some of the wealthiest people in the world for a very long time. I haven't been, but I have friends who simply love it there. So for the opportunity to live there for two years in a tax-free jurisdiction, if you're looking for a place to update your address and change your tax domicile, this Cayman uh, concierge program is pretty interesting. So I would say if you have the income to qualify and you are looking to live a Caribbean island lifestyle, then definitely apply. For everyone else, pass, but you can still go visit for six months. Skip. Another zero tax jurisdiction with a digital nomad visa is Anguilla. Anguilla is a beautiful, tiny little British colony in the Caribbean with only about 15,000 people on it, but it looks just like a postcard. And now you can live and work there for up to a year for a $2,000 application fee. So it's not ideal. If you really want to go there for a year and not just a few months, you could apply. But otherwise, if you just want to go on holiday to Anguilla with your laptop, go for it. In this case, unless you want to stay long term or you're looking for a income tax free new destination to call home, pass. Mm. Don't go check it out, but no need to apply for the visa. And finally, over in the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of Madagascar, near Reunion Island, is Mauritius offering a one-year digital nomad visa program. So this would be the first digital nomad visa program of its kind over in Africa. Without a digital nomad visa, you could only travel to Mauritius for 60 days. So if you're looking for a very exotic, very remote, very beautiful, very isolated place to live and you're into scuba diving or snorkeling or just hanging out on the beach, then I would say to give it a go. But otherwise, just go for a month or so and call it a day. Mauritius, eh. If you wanna stay long-term. It's a good place to quarantine or social distance, but it's not the best place to integrate with a community of remote workers, and it's not the best place to get cheap flights to other digital nomad destinations. So, you be the judge. Yes. Both of us can be judges. Is that correct? Yes. So let me know in the comments below, which digital nomad visa will you be applying for, if any? Give this video a thumbs up or else, and subscribe for more weekly travel updates and videos to help you work online and travel the world.